All right, welcome everybody out um, to um, Jay Falden um, on energy and emotions is our topic tonight. Um, okay. And um, oh, essential oils, uh, she's put together some fantastic material here, um, has a lot of things to share with you. Um, you know, she actually uh, taught this at a local class um, last week and it, it went really well. <laughs> so again, thank you everybody for joining us. Those who are joining for the first time or listening in uh, for the first time, um, we have a lot of material available on jadebalden.com. All these past um, sessions that we've had are also available there. So go ahead and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel or, or the podcast and you'll get updates. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce our presenter, Jade Balden, extraordinaire. <laughs> Thank you. Um, she's it's been, brownie points for that. <laughs> yes, I get brownie points. So I'll do a good job introducing her. <laughs> um, she's been teaching about essential oils for um, several years now, six or seven years now. Um, and halfway through this process, you know, she's uh, really um, started understanding uh, energy healing, emotional healing. Um, and a lot of times, you know, sometimes we get in that paradigm with, you know, there's a pill for every ill, go to the doctor because, you know, we need some solution or something. Um, um, and she's um, discovered all these other ways of, um, you know, looking at our, our health and our well being um, other than just those uh, traditional ways. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Jade Bob, um, talking about energy and emotions. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, last week I taught this at our local class. We had Stacy. She was visiting from out of town. That was kind of cool, and we had, Beth was there too. So that was awesome. So guys, tell me what do you know about emotional healing? About energy? What are your thoughts about it? I don't have any emotions on this. <laughs> <laughs> <Andrew. Data. Yeah. laughs> emotional healing is just as important as physical healing and i feel like it's like oftentimes really neglected um but everything starts in your mind so if you neglect your emotions then your body isn't going to get the nourishment or like feel the best it's going to be so if you can like start with emotions like it really just helps everything else in your body mm -hmm. absolutely i like that and there's some people that would go even as far as to say any physical ailment has an emotional root um, well, i'm sure jade would mention that yep i believe that anyone else i've been a uh gosh known about um uh, emotional um affirmations and, and trying to help yourself emotionally through affirmations and different things like that since my mother was, since I was a child, she's used the Louise Hay, um, you know, connecting with your al physical ailments to your emotional issues to have affirmations for helping that. And that's all part of that as well. Um, and yeah, it's just phenomenal how correct um, she actually has a book where it actually guides you on exactly what the ailment is and what it, you know, like, and it's been around for, you know, 30 odd, 40 odd years or something like that. So, yeah, something I've known about all since I was a child. So, it's, yeah, I just love any ways of enhancing healing that way because it's, mm -hmm. it's such wonders. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So when I first started, um, of course, you know, you have your physical problems that you want to um, fix. So you have your aches and pains and your sores and things and you just want to fix it. And we, we're, never, we're not taught to look at it in a different way, not in this society anyways. Um, and as you, when uh, you start healing, you think, why did I have that in the first place? You know, am I broken? So mm -hmm. what I want to tell people is the first thing is the paradigm um, of healing. So the philosophy that our body knows how to heal. So that's very, very important um, because it's not like your computer and you have viruses sometimes and you break down and um, you got to get someone to go in there and fix it from the outside. Okay, you're actually this very powerful being um, and something inside of you is not balanced and it causes something on the outside. So we call it manifesting. Your body will manifest what's, what's not balanced on the inside so you're not at ease and so we call that dis-ease or disease 
Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. The disease is just being not at ease inside somewhere, somehow. And the reason why we have that physical ailment is for us to learn to change. And, you know, in our Christian world, we call that repent. It's not about being sinful and then being good, being sinful and being good. It's about, hey, you're getting, you're good, you're getting better. That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's I, what I love about what we do because we will have a more permanent change and we will maintain healthy weight, healthy physical body, healthy life. And at the end of the day, we're happier. So, I'm, you know, trying to um, cover up symptoms. You know, stop our brains from feeling pain, you know, stop that neurotransmitter from, you know, feeling anything, you know, all those things. It doesn't lead us to a more peaceful, happy being, you know, sense of being. It doesn't. It's just like um, temporary and then what? There's, there's, there's other thing. There's more, right? So that's what we want to help people because then it's more of this um, peace that's lasting, so that's why this is important for us to, to learn how to do. And um, we're actually putting together a course um, that we'll um, release soon. Um, and uh, we'll teach people how to do the energy healing. But let's go to the emotions and energy. And we'll kind of discover that and dig into that a little bit. Yeah. going to cough. Um, so... Uh, you know, we are this amazing energy being that um, we have a lot of energy. So if you think about um, just little particles, that's what we're made of, right? If we break everything down to smaller and smaller pieces, we end up um, looking at just little atoms. And atoms have what? We have these electrons. So the electrons have a positive or a negative or a neutral charge, right? So that's what we are at the core. Okay, um, so here I wrote that um, the atoms arranged and organized make molecules. Molecules make up proteins, that's carbohydrates. And the molecules make DNA, DNA makes our cells. And then our cells make us. And, um, you know, we have full control over, you know, how much positive, um, you know, energy we have or how much negative energy we have. And sometimes we have different parts of our body that has more positive, more negative. So we have like this energy, like emotion is energy. So we have this energy ball sometimes stuck in certain places, right? And that will give us a clue as to where to start to heal and we'll go backwards. So in Chinese medicine, um, I don't know about if you know, the saying, um, chase the dragon. So one of my friends, she's, uh, she's a Reiki master and she, she teaches at universities and everything. And she tells me, she's like, where's the dragon now? Right? So, you know, as soon as we heal from one thing, it will feel great. And then something else over here feels uncomfortable. You know, it's like chasing the dragon. We're peeling layers and we're going backwards to where it all started. It's like everything is linked, linked, linked together. So that's an interesting idea, isn't it? So what do you think about that, chasing the dragon? Does that make sense? Is there so, always another problem? Like you fix something and you find another problem and then mm -hmm. you delve into another problem and then delve into another problem and then you fix and fix and fix as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. So, but what is hurting right now and mm -hmm. it's presenting itself right now is what where we start. Right. Okay, so that's, that's the very first thing we start with and because it's, it's the loudest. Sometimes other pe people have other problems too. You look at some people, you're thinking you're eating unhealthy and all of these things and you still look okay. You mean you still, you know, and they only have complained about this one problem. But guess what? As they start healing that one problem, oh, another thing presents itself. So by the way, your brain wasn't registering that you're hurting here, that this part is here is not really balanced and that part there. And then slowly, so we have all these people that are very health, you know, crazy health nuts my friends are and then we're like but we have this problem and then this problem too and you're thinking that lady she's eating junk food and doesn't look like she's got you know any problems at all and it's not that she doesn't she does but she's not aware of it yet so something on the surface is what she's focusing right now okay if she's even aware that she needs to heal from it and a lot of times that's what i don't like about drugs is because sometimes it just cuts out 
our feelings off or we don't feel anymore and suddenly we think it's gone, but it's not. Masking. Okay. No. Um, so we have a lot of learning to do, a lot of changes to make so that we're a better being. Um, and if you don't um, focus on those things and work on those things and you're just passive, you're actually living a sleepy life. <laughs> so here we are, we're, we're helping ourselves be more awakened. That's what they, they talk about when they say awakening. All right, so this guy, um, Bruce Lipton, I know a lot of people mm -hmm. know him. Um, he wrote the book called Biology of Belief. So about 20 years ago, he mm -hmm. discovered that if he um, took stem cells and removed the DNA from it, the stem cells continue to live and it continues to multiply and divide. And so when he took part, uh, a bit of it and divided the stem cells up into different petri dishes uh, of different um, mediums, the petri dishes actually they they grow differently. And one will have um, you know you know um, is it's a spinal cord cells and in different skin cells and different other organ cells. And he was thinking this is incredible. It's living like three mm -hmm. months beyond the, the time that they took out the DNA that it was meant to be giving them instructions <laughs> and it's still duplicating and it's, it's doing something different. It's like it knows what it's doing. Mm -hmm. okay? So he's like, there's some intelligence there that we don't understand yet. So when it comes down to it all, his conclusion was that we are not victims of our hereditary. Okay. That belief, attitude and perception actually is the, um, the stimulant for what happens in our cells. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take a minute to absorb that. So, you know, we have control. What we believe, what our attitude is, like Peachy was saying, she's uh, trying to be taught positive. I'm, I'm not going to allow that negativity, right? And our perception of the world. Um, so all that actually determines... Um, the health or the state um, of our cells. All right. Mm. So that's pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah. So if we go a little bit further here, um, that's a huge statement. <laughs> it's like it's like completely flipping your entire belief system upside down. It's just yeah. Like, it mm -hmm. does. It does because we have been taught and they perpetuate that old philosophy that the DNA runs it all. You know, you have no control over anything. It just happens to you. It just happened that way. Um, and so here it is saying like, actually you can change that. And there's some um, debate, but I heard that, you know, only 1% of you genetically um, that you have um, a disease that you have genetically will manifest. And some people say three percent, but either way, it's a very small percentage. Um, so when people are, you know, getting a blood test and they say, "Oh, you have a predisposition for diabetes and predisposition for this cancer and this cancer and this cancer," Dr. Lipton says, actually, they get it because they believe it. They get it because they go ahead and do all of the the different um, treatments for it, and then they get it. Of course, they use carcinogens. And then they get cancer from cousins. <laughs> they're looking for it. They probably, um, they probably get it too, though, because they're, the way their their families have actually maybe uh, lived their life as in their food and their um, environment has been very yeah. similar to what they've had. So it's because yeah. of the mm -hmm. environment, not necessarily because of the DNA as to why you are receiving that illness or so forth or so forth. Because there's certain things like diabetes, it, you know, it runs in the family and if you've had history in your family of having it, well, then you're likely to get it. But it's actually because you've actually grown up with eating the same things that they've eaten. So yeah. they're Lifestyles. Yeah. Lifestyles. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a beautiful mm -hmm. friend of mine. She, you know, I look at her and I'm like, you're just like a hot supermodel, you know? And she's like, yeah, my whole family, they're like diabetic, they're overweight and everything. You know, and she said, I don't believe that. I don't believe it was, you know, in our genes. And so she, she became a chiropractor and she, she is exactly what, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to eat the way they eat. I'm not going to live the way they live. I'm not going to think the way they think. I'm going to make a difference. And then you change and you never, you don't perpetuate that. And your kids don't perpetuate that. And it stops here. You are the tra chain breaker. 
Okay, yeah. Jade. Awesome. Jade, I saw this story the other day about some genetic research they were doing on um, Alzheimer's disease or whatever. And they found this genetic marker. They <laughs> predict whether you will have Alzheimer's. And so this family, these kids were making these decisions to not have children because they had a 50% chance of getting Alzheimer's because their dad had this gene or whatever. Oh and I was like, how horrible for this doctor to tell them that they have to have this disease later because they think that, that it's in the genes or whatever. But yeah. it, was, it made me sad. I had to turn it off. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think um, I, I just, I've watched so many things like that. Like this one boy, he, um, he was told that he was spastic. Like his family was, said he, and the doctor said he was spastic. So they put him in a spastic center and, you know, he walked like one, he acted like one. And years and years later, another doctor tested him and they're like, your son has nothing. You know, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Um, you know, that was a wrong diagnosis. And then they realized that this whole time that boy was just manifesting what he was told. It's right? just like that movie, The Secret Garden. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. That's it. Grow up and have a hump on his back because his dad did, but he didn't. Right, <laughs> right, right. And then that, and that same do this same doctor, he said that he experienced another family who did have a spastic son, but they did not put him in a center. They told him he was normal, and they created an environment at home where he could stretch his legs and do all these things. And he grew up not having it. He kind of overcame it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, look at that. That's just amazing. So now this is really special here. We are water benders, guys, all of us, <laughs> right? And air benders. So first of all, I'll tell you about this first and then we'll, we'll talk about the, the photography. So they, they do brilliant photography. This is a special photography where they don't use light. It's just electrical pulses and they just put a little bit of an electrical probe onto the the leaf so they took a photo of the, the leaf that has an electrical probe just kind of attached to it so the electricity runs mm -hmm. through it they take a photo of the leaf and so they cut the leaf they took it, you know and they took another photo of the leaf and when they waited long enough they saw the cut part of it um still showing it's sort of the phantom part of it okay so it's really interesting that you know we have this spiritual duality about us we have this physical body and we also have this spirit about us and sometimes when people say oh they've i've taken my gallbladder but then you're testing me gallbladder what you know it's it's because the energy is still there okay mm. it's really interesting um and you can do that with lots of things people that are very healthy their aura is very strong and bright okay so um, I just think that this is evidence that we have a spirit. So our physical body and our spirit body is made from the same stuff, but one is more dense than the other. Okay. Yep. So that's the idea. And you know, people that have like amputations, so they keep on, they can complain about, oh, my, my leg, the ampu amputated yeah. leg is itchy. Right? Mm -hmm. And what they do to help that, you know, you put a mirror in between your legs and scratch the legs that you have, um, still, and then the other leg will feel comforted. <laughs> it's called phantom pains. Yeah, mm -hmm. phantom pains. See, in the mm -hmm. medical world, they know it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so your your energy is still there. So it's just for me, I feel like yeah, one day we'll get all our bell limbs and our body parts again, and you know, it'll come together somehow. It's just ours. So it's beautiful. Now let me tell you about curly and photography. Um, I mean, sorry, the Colleen Photography book is, is that the leaf part, and you can read about it there. But uh, I'll tell you about uh, this Japanese doctor, uh, Masaru Emoto. I love this because it's him. He took uh, water samples and they just talk to water. Uh, they, they say lots of words that like love and gratitude to water, and then they they put the water under a microscope and freeze it and watch the crystals form. And, um, you know, it, it's amazing because sometimes they take the same water samples and they take about 50 of the same water samples just to make sure they got it right. Okay. And it's not just random. So they take this and they say love and gratitude. And, you know, this water sample produces this amazing symmetrical crystal. 
Mm. You know, and the same water sample, you can say you know, in Japanese, you fool. I think it's like, <laughs> right? And then, you know, the, the, even the color and the shape of it is um, different. Okay, you can say fool in English, and that shape is different. When they freeze it and they take the crystal photos, the photos of the crystals, Okay, and here you make me sick, I want to kill you. And if you look closely, it looks like a hunter with a bow in that, in that little bubble thing. But mm -hmm. um, you can actually find the, all of the, his photos in a book called The Hidden Messages of Water, uh, in Water. And um, I have a YouTube video linked to it. Oops, sorry. Honey, you should drive. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I think I have a YouTube video linked to that too. So yeah, go ahead and, and watch it one time. It's very interesting. Right oh, there we go. Because the idea behind it is what um, Dr. Emoto is saying that we have a very fantastic ability to um, affect water. Okay, so that's, that's what it is. Um, so how much of our body is water, guys? Um, 70%. That's right. So imagine someone saying, you fool, you idiot, you fool, you idiot all the time. It's like, Meow. okay, but if you're lovely, love you, gratitude, you're awesome. Okay, it builds you up, right? It's mm -hmm. exactly what this is. This him taking uh, evidence, pictures of actually actual crystals of what's happening inside. So all that is all about energy, okay? We... I hope that you see that I've established this, that we are energy creatures, um, that we have this ability to influence our energy. Okay. And so guess what? Emotions is energy. And every emotion is a, a separate little um, vibration. So, you know, hatred, anger, fear, all of that is just our own vibration but what we want to to do is to identify it and then move it out because we have that power to do so and change that negative emotion to a positive emotion okay so you want to know how to do that yeah <laughs> yeah all righty so first of all um we need to be able to um, tap into what we're feeling right now. So all you need to do is just be mindful, be still and aware. What am I feeling? What's happening inside? So one thing we can do is just pick up the oil and smell it. Okay, if the oil stinks, what does that mean? Someone's not feeling right. You know, that's, it's the oil that you need, but it's not an oil that you're ready for. Yeah, that, I heard it's an oil that you need. If, if, you, if you're not attracted to the oil, you probably yeah. really need it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if it's an oil that's absolutely yummy to you, it's the oil you need and it's mm -hmm. an oil you are ready for. Okay, okay. so we start there because it's a little bit easier that way. So if you're like loving this oil and it's just got a strong hold on you, go for it and smell it and use it. The idea is to smell it, but also you want to use um, this book here, the emotions book here. Yeah, it's just bright. There we are. Okay, so it's, it's on my website here. Um, there, there's a link, um, you know, it's just, just books there. And um, in case people need to look for it, sometimes people have a hard time finding things. I thought I'll just put a list of books that I like. Um, but this is important. So, so guys, tell me uh, an oil that you love, just love, can't get enough of right now. Anybody? Oh, Coriander. Coriander. Let's go with that. Coriander. <laughs> Easier. Okay. So let's find Coriander from Megan. So if you look at this book, it's alphabetical. Coriander is the oil is of integrity. Okay. Um, so the negative emotion that it's trying to clear is being controlled by others or self-betrayal, um, drudgery and conforming. So, you know, for you right now, Miss Megan, <laughs> you're building a brand new business, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're different. <laughs> you're not, you know, the nine to five, you're not, you don't do what the default of society is doing right now. You're creating something that, um, you know, is, is more of a dream, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so this here, if it's yummy to you, it's saying, you know, it's the oil of integrity. So what is it saying? It wants you to honor yourself, okay, and be true to yourself. So the positive emotion is being true to yourself and allowing your inner, inner guidance to guide your actions. Okay, so sometimes yeah. we, want to, we want to do that, but we, we feel like, oh, I don't know, I can. But this <laughs> coriander says, yeah, you can. Go for it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that makes a lot of sense because my dad, like, he's definitely the most, like, negative person in my life. He's very logical and, you know, like, wants me to finish school and be a doctor and, like, do all these things because I could. And it's like, you're always too much of a dreamer. You need to keep your feet on the ground and be practical, but. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Practical, practical. I've heard that before. But, you know, those people that are crazy enough to dream are the people that, are crazy enough to, to, you know, build this amazing, you know, reality, you know, the Steve Jobs of the world, the mm-hmm. Disney's of mm-hmm. the world, right? If they don't, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, no one's ever done it before. They just go, went ahead and did it themselves. And we need those crazy people, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> people ask me, hey, wait, why aren't you being a teacher anymore? That was a great job for you. Who wouldn't like that nine to three job? But I thought, no, I'm done with that chapter. I need to do this because then I can travel. I can do all these things. It's kind of crazy. But, you know, when you honor yourself, you know, the, the other people's energy doesn't bother you. But that's the emotional healing about it. It's like letting go of the, all that drudgery, all that conforming. I don't need to conform. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, giving yourself that strength. So you're tossing all this negative out and you're bringing in Okay, I am true to myself. I have this inner strength and no one can shake me, right? That's all mm. you need. And one day when you're smelling it, you think, oh, it's nice, but it's not as nice as it used to be. What does that mean? It means you're better. You're better. You're done. You're done with it. Move on to the next oil, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I had a family that's diabetic and they had geranium. They just geranium for three months. Love it, love it, love it. Blood sugar level all down. Excellent. And then they said, oh, geranium, stop working, Jake. Oh, it's a geranium's fault. I said, no, no. <laughs> you guys go and, you know, use the next oil for you. Okay. And it's like, oh, okay. So it's just another layer. And, you know, where's the dragon now? The dragon's somewhere else. We're, we're, we're healing something else now. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's the idea. All right, mm-hmm. one more oil. Let's find somebody else's oil. I like sandalwood. I, I it's so appealing. Oh yeah, sandalwood <laughs> is so yummy. I had a girlfriend. Um, so I do energy healing. I muscle test people and I do give people sessions. So I, I tested my friend and I said, "Hey, you need sandalwood." And she's like, "Oh, I never smelled it before." So she sniffed it. She said, "Oh, yuck! You know, stinks." Mm-hmm. And I said, I looked at her and I said, "Um." something to do with prayer perhaps and she just burst out crying and cried and cried and then she said jade i was just thinking about how horrible i am what a bad person i am and i don't deserve and i I don't feel like i should pray i just don't feel like i'm worthy and she cried some more and you know you don't talk to people when they're crying you just let them cry (laughs) and then when she was done i said well what is sandalwood telling you and she said i think i need to pray again and mm. she, she just thought, oh, somehow God wants me to pray. And so mm. she decided, yep, that's what I'm going to do. And I said, now smell the sandalwood. And she's like, oh, it's divine. What did you do? What happened? Mm-hmm. You know, just five minutes ago, it was like, yuck. And now it's yummy. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. It's you. You've changed. Oh, it's so sweet. It's beautiful. It is so I, mean, sweet. I find it very attractive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. So for you, the sandwood is to help you stop overthinking. God's got your back. Oh my gosh, that is me. <laughs> that <Yeah>. is me. <laughs> Sometimes we think and think and we're trying to use that logical brain of ours. Mm-hmm. So we get this heart. Wow. Right? And we just need to let that guide us. Okay. And sandalwood, I put it on my, my little third eye here. I lift it up and say, hey, I'm open for divine download here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Knowing what to do. Yeah. And wow. sometimes you get given a step at a time, a little gift at a time, and then you just move forward. You're not going to get this whole big um, you know, download. It's just a little bit here, a little bit there, as much as you're ready for. But just trust me. I've got your back, right? 
So that's oh. what it's saying. So when you, when you say, I'm attracted to this, look up that oil and say, oh, what is it teaching me? <laughs> yes, I think that word just overthinking jumped off the page for me. <laughs> it landed on my lap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. That, that's amazing. That's yep. me. <laughs> yep. so, you know, if you get um, ideas or something in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning or whatever, you get up and you write it down, okay? Okay. I would, I would do something more. I would say, dear peaches, and then wait for download. And then okay. you write what you feel. And sometimes you read it back again and you're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when that happens, I'll let you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So sandalwood is an oil that helps us have spiritual devotion. The idea behind it is just to release all that negative energy. So you look at that and you think, okay, I have this emotion of negative thinking or I have this um, – emotion of um, material um, materialism it doesn't mean like oh you know look, you know collecting things like a material girl it means you can't see things beyond um, your physical uh, situation now your bills your house your home you know whatever it is you can't see beyond that but there's a spiritual um, direction that you can see beyond what you can physically see and that's mm. what it wants you to do it wants you to see more than that mm. yep. oh lord thank that's you Jesus. Yep. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Slowly peel off layers that you didn't even know you had, but you mm -hmm. just use that. So you start with smelling the oils, mm -hmm. and, and if the oils are calling to you, that's where you start. Okay. Okay. And, that, and I should diffuse it. Yep. It's just getting it into your brains. <laughs> For us, anything that's emotional, you you rub it on anywhere close to your brains, your 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 nose, so you can smell that's it and right. get it in. So that you can learn the lesson you need to learn and change the way you need to change. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because we all have this very specific plan in the great grand plan of God. And, you know, we always have this beautiful path that is just us, just ours. But we need to honor that and just go, okay, and do our own dance. <laughs> okay. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. This other thing too is if you look at the emotion that you have, and if you know you can identify the emotion, on the back of this book, um, you can actually look at the emotions. And so if you say, I feel guilty, I don't know, I just feel guilty leaving the kids, I feel guilty, whatever it is, spending too much time at work or whatever it is that you have, um, you can look up the emotion here mm -hmm. and it'll give you the suggested oils. Okay, and then so you have to go to those oils and smell it and say, okay, this is the one. I can smell it. This is the one for me. Mm -hmm. And then you get that same information we were talking about earlier. Is it yummy? Is it not yummy? Okay, mm -hmm. if it's okay, don't worry about that one. But if it's, no, this one's not good. Okay, really not good. It smells like stink bug to me. <laughs> then you think, okay, better look at this. What is this emotion about? Oh, yeah, okay, I am very stubborn. <laughs> right? And then you can say, okay, now I'm going to try and release that feeling of stubbornness um, because it's causing me to feel this guilt. Okay, and then you work on that until you feel better and until you see your stuff change. Mm. Well, what do they have for confusion? <laughs> like you feel about confused about whether you're making the right choice or not. You, you're not, a, okay. you know, like you feel like a little confused, confusion mm -hmm. in your spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look it up, so let's see, confusion, see, confusion, confused, confusion, clary, sage, lemon, peppermint, and rosemary. Okay. So you can look up those oils and say, okay, let me smell it. Let me use it and mm -hmm. see if I could just clear my thinking and mm -hmm. help me make better decisions. So that clary sage oil, amazing. On the third eye again, smelling it. Mm -hmm. um, lemon, of course, is great because when you drink it, mm -hmm. it helps with your gut, helps you focus on what you need to, to focus on and help you think things through logically. Lemon is for a right brain. Okay, so yep, the other oils are awesome too. Rosemary is that transition. Um, you actually seeing yourself make a change and um, actually see that change happening in your mind. Okay. And Peaches, have you done a cleanse yet? Um, no, I'm thinking about starting it next month. A, a lot of people, month, you know, they, they, they have this brain cloud, they have this confusion, and, and, it, and it, 
it has to do with your gut because like Jade tells people, you know, your gut has a lot of neurotransmitters. They find mm -hmm. that when they clear out their gut, you know, with the GI cleansing blend, that's the GX assist and mm -hmm. they go through that with the Terrazine and the PB assist and everything. It's like, it's like they woke up and the, <laughs> and the, and the cloud is lifted and they're able to think clearly again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the, one of the first things that most people need is just to clean. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and they can claim they can uh, think clearly again. Yep. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Do you guys think too that like if sandalwood is her oil, like that prayer and connecting to God, like God is not a God of confusion. So if you're staying with that confusion, that could yeah. be your oil too. And I could, yeah, I could stand to stay in my prayer closet a, a lot more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yes. that sandalwood says, hey, stop overthinking. You've got it. You've got it. <laughs> yeah. Thank yourself. you. Yeah. All righty. So the sandalwood, is that just one for smelling or is it one for ingesting as well? Sandalwood is great for smelling and for skin. Um, I don't normally use it to ingest um, mm -hmm. because it does so well with the skin. But you you can ingest you, it. You In fact, the Modern Essentials book says yeah. that, you know, Sandalwood is one of those uh, really interesting um, things where when you smell it, it has a different effect than ingesting it. One can uh, uplift you, one can so calm you. <laughs> yeah. So just because it takes a different pathway yeah. through your body. That's why... So with, yes, you can yeah. ingest it, but you'll expect different things from it. For kids that have <clears throat> um, cognitive concerns, I like to use sandalwood on the forehead and the back of the neck because it goes into the blood-brain barrier. We want it to travel through, um, you know, using the blood to carry it into the brains. Um, yeah. And that's very powerful for helping with the brain connectivity again. Okay, so that's why I would use it just topically. So like Ben said, you can use it all three ways, but it just depends on why you want to use it. Okay, emotionally, for the oils, if you want to help with the emotional healing, it's smelling it because your sense of smell will give you an indicator of how well you're doing. You know, love it, love it, love it, can't get enough, you still need it, come on, use it more. Okay, it's okay now, you're done with it. It's so stinky, can't stand it. Then, hey, we'll have to look at the emotion and kind of work things out a little bit here. Okay, and eventually like this guy, make friends with this guy, okay? So that's the idea of the emotional healing. So, you know, different oils have different vibrations. So we have the rose oil as a very high vibration. You know, very, you know if you look at um, uh, the vibration charts of some people, they, sometimes it's, you can see the different um, levels of, um, they call it, um, uh, what is it? And not enlightenment, but uh, um, just being aware. I, I have that chat when I, I do energy healing for people. And it's, it's just great because the more positive, the more light and the more love you have, the higher you vibrate. And some people have this beautiful energy that you want to just hang out with them all the time because they lift you up. Okay? And you want to mm -hmm. be those people that carry the light around like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have some suggestions here. Um, you know, we have for people that are feeling sad, lavender, clary sage, lemon, lime, white fur, discouraged sandalwood, okay, and the joyful blend, which is the elevation. People that are feeling blue, myrrh might help, okay, tired and unmotivated. We have citrus bliss um, and other single oils that are citrus oils. Peppermint is great. Um, for people that are nervous, uh, clary sage, bergamot, a restless or lack of concentration, rosemary, lavender, grounding blend, and the focus blend. That's really good. Okay, and you know, sometimes we make these suggestions, but your body will be different. That's why I like people to develop their intuition and they will eventually know what to do. I encourage kids to do it from a young age so that they don't grow up feeling like they don't know what's happening inside of them. If they have that that power. My kids have been taught and they can go to the oil box or the oil shelf. We actually have an oil shelf now um, and just pick the oils that they feel like they want or need. Wow. Yep. Cool. 
So it's amazing to see uh, when I do energy healing on kids, um, I just give them the whole oil box and I say, pick one. Um, so one time this boy, he was about eight years old. Um, the mum, she was sitting right by him and we, we just muscle tested and we found an emotion that he needed help with. And I said, pick one. And then he picked the right one and I opened the book and we went down and that emotion was in the book. And the mum was like, whoa, you know, wow, Jane. And I said, I didn't do it. He picked it, right? You saw. And then we did that four times in a row. And she was like, this is amazing. Kids are so intuitive. And I said, yeah, we just need to let them be. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just let them pick. They just know. They just know. So it's just beautiful that way. All right. So one last thing I want to talk about is muscle testing. Um, so muscle testing is this uh, wonderful way for us to access. Um, yeah, we still have these emotions, uh, oils. And we'll talk about that too. A uh, wonderful way to access our subconscious. So, you know, you can hold, uh, has there been anybody here experienced it before? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So some of you have done work with, so you're probably aware of that. But, you know, if you say something that's true for you, the reptile, the mammalian, and the cortex fire at the same time, you, um, the electrical pulses, and then your muscles stay strong. Okay, so I'm Jade Strong. I'm Bob the Builder. It gets a little bit weaker. So the idea is not to have an arm wrestle. It's to uh, feel the difference between strength and weakness. And sometimes you can use your little fingers, you know, strong, weak, strong, weak. Jade you know, and Michael, I'm not Michael, okay, I'm Jade, I'm Bob, okay, and then you can start, to, you know, finding answers for yourself, so we, I put together this um, oil chart here, and I will share with you, and if you guys want a copy, just let me know, or maybe we'll just post it, um, we'll post it, so I can say, you know, say a quick prayer for, for um, my children, so, okay, so my, one of my daughters, and I say, well, does, does Emily need an oil? And I say, stay strong for yes, and so it's, it's strong. Okay, so my, my hand, my fingers are strong. So I can say, okay, does Emily need um, one oil, two oils? So two oils for Emily, so the, the two is strong. So, and then I say, okay, is it the first one in column A? Yes, no, nope, column B. That's, okay, row one, row two. Okay, so it's... Is it helichrysum? Is it jasmine? Is it juniper berry? It's juniper berry. So I'll write that down, juniper berry, and I'll say how many drops? One, two drops. How many times a day? Once, twice a day. So right now, Emily actually has um, a little bit of an allergic reaction. She, she ate um, some food that she wasn't meant to eat at a party on Sunday, and she's got a, little, a few itchy spots on her and juniper berry actually clears that out so that's good so i'm going to write that down <laughs> you want to write it down honey just two drops <laughs> you can see you see that it really helps and sometimes you don't know why um, and we can look at the emotion too we can say is it this emotion in juniper berry is it this emotion and then we can say okay well that's what she's healing from or that she's clearing out so we can say the second oil let's go for the second oil is it in column a or column b column b Okay, row one, row two, row three. The patchouli, the rose, the sandalwood. Spearmint, spearmint for her. Okay, spearmint came up last week again for her and now she needs it again. So she's still needing that oil. Okay, so that's how you find out what oils you need. But it's wonderful because when you open up the book and you discover the emotion of it, you know, you can see that that's what your body is trying to work on. Okay, so it's really cool that we can tap into our subconscious. And um, I've gotten to the point where I can help others because so I can connect to them. And um, you guys can develop that too and um, help each other because we're all connected in this big world of ours. Yeah. So mm. any questions or comments? Did she explain that too fast? You? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm looking at the columns. I, I just, what, the, what do the columns mean in the numbers again? Uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't mean anything. We're just breaking it up in little um, sections so I can find the oils quickly. So she's just asking yes or no questions. And instead of going through all of these and ask yes or no for all of them, yep. she can see the whole list and then she narrows it down by saying, okay, three columns, is it one, two, or three? And she's, she's narrowed it down. She's got rid of two thirds of it, but she knows it's in here. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She knows it's in there. So it's just a way of narrowing it down. Mm-hmm. Nothing yeah. special. Oh, okay. yeah. Not, yeah, nothing because it's alphabetical. And, you know, I can say, just is it Ava Vita? Yes, uh, no. Is it, you know, Basil? Yes, no. That was going to take me a long time. So just by process of elimination, a yes or no. And, yeah. and, and if you have your essential oils, like in a box, you can say, is it this column or is it this column or this column? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Just okay. One, That's all she's doing. With just that. one way to do it. You, you know, people don't have you to You can do make it. up your own chart. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. All yeah. right. For me, it's just an easy way to just pick out the right oil for my kids or for myself or the people that I'm working with. Um, and we'll find the oils. And, uh, you know, like I earlier before the call, I worked with a family and I just said, okay, here's one particular oil. I don't know. I don't know you, but you know, I just know that your energy needs that one. And then they could um, look it up and say, yeah, that's me. Mm-hmm. So you're being intuitive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is okay. The muscle testing, did you guys get that? Um, no. How are you doing the, how are you using your body? Can you explain that a little bit more on how you use your body to be intuitive that way? Yeah. So, um, you know, I can think of a person like my daughter, okay, and, you know, I can say her name, Emily, so strong. So that, that means that I'm connected to her right now. So because you think about somebody, you know, sometimes you, you pick up the phone and you say, wait, I was about to call you. And they mm-hmm. said, well, I'm a, you know, <laughs> I wanted to call you. And you said, what? <laughs> you know, that's a coincidence, but it's not really because you both kind of thought about each other and then you called each other. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. You think about each other and then you're actually mm-hmm. connected already. Um, and then so I can say, what, you know, asking God, what oils can I use to help my daughter? Okay, so, you know, I can use my own muscles um, as a surrogate for her. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we can do that for each other. Sometimes you just think, oh, I feel like she needs this, and that's it. Some people are very intuitive that I don't even need to muscle test. They can just say, look, I feel like I need to give frankincense to so-and-so. You know, I feel like she needs it. So with teachers, when she said sandalwood, you know, I picked out the overthinking, right? I don't know peaches, but it just came to me. Mm-hmm. Right? And you get really good at that because you've gotten all the junk out of the way, and everyone um, can be... Uh, very intuitive as as you go along and you peel off the, all the negative layers and stuff and then you just you feel lighter and you feel more love and ability to connect with people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so putting like together a class for yeah i've got a course that i teach people how to do this too so don't worry if you don't get it all today <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. it's kind of like learning the oils and what they're um well, learning what they're called for starters because like, yeah. there's so many, so many of them. Yeah. And that part sort of helps you to centralise how you would feel. Like it's kind of like uh, for me, I'm looking at it as I'm looking at this page with the oils on it and I could think of somebody and then to me, what am I drawn to? It's kind of like crystals. You know, when you, you know instinctively you're drawn to a crystal and then you read what it's about and it actually tells you and it's like that's what I needed and I knew that but... Yeah. You don't know until you've picked it and read the little blurb and then you kind of, it's the same sort of concept, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Sometimes I just give people the page. So one time I looked at a friend and I said, look, I feel like you might need a la- line. And I just gave her the page. And she looked at it and she pointed to suicidal thoughts. And I thought, no. She said, yep, yeah. that's me. And then she just went on and said, oh, you know, my, two years ago my son died and this and this and this and this. And I thought, oh, I had no idea. Well, Right, that it's just like you know, you're you're entitled to um, to know to be an instrument in God's hand to help whoever you want to help. You know, mm-hmm. you have that desire mm-hmm. for for good for other people. You just want to help someone. So what do I do? You know, God's not gonna sit there and go figure it out yourself. You know, it's just hey, why don't you just give her lavender or lime? And you don't know, but yeah. they know and God knows, and that's all that matters. So I love that because then I can really help people. So mm. the other thing too, uh, we have these beautiful, that's why doTERRA created these oils because they know that these oils are very powerful at, with helping us emotionally. So they actually have like an emotional oil range. So it goes, you know, you've got this peace, motivate, cheer, passion, forgive, and consult. Mm. It's amazing. 
because sometimes you give somebody an oil and it's like, oh, yuck, uh, right? But then the next moment it's, yum, I really need that. Um, so one of my friends, she, she lost her dad. And, you know, what can you do for somebody? You know, you can't bring him back. But, you know, what I did was just gave her a necklace diffuser and said, here, you know, I put to console oil in there. And I said, here, this is for you. And she was like, I love it. I loved it. And she said it kept her all together that week. You know, she kept her going and kept her, you know, in pieces, you know, so that she doesn't fall out in, in pieces. So, um, that was good. She told me later on, she said, it just kept me together. It just, I, went, I got through that week and I uh, thought, oh, how powerful. Because I wouldn't know what else to do but say, I'm so sorry, you know, and give her a hug. That's it. But that's, that's the idea of um, these oils. So they're very powerful in that way. Mm -hmm. So I want to end by t telling you about the literal language of the body. Okay, so if you don't already, you can have a look at uh, books like this. This is Feeling Spirit Alive, Never Died. Okay, can you see that on, one? Uh, yeah, we're going to get it on the screen, honey. And here there's um, two sets of charts in this book. One mm -hmm. is um, emotion. So sometimes you have a negative emotion. So when you remove that negative emotion, it's sort of like removing a weed from a garden. Now you've created a little void, a little hole. Um, if you leave it alone, you know, default and things, anything will get into that space. Okay. But you have to be uh, conscious. And normally if you leave it alone, sometimes other negative things fill that space and you don't want that. So what we do is in this book, she has a negative emotion and like four or three or four um, positive emotion to replace that. Okay. So, um, say you're rushed. I, I always feel rushed. I don't know why I always feel rushed. And you can say, I'm going to release feeling rushed. I smell my oil, smell my wild orange oil, help me feel better about, you know, time. And I have lots of time and mm -hmm. I'm going to remove feeling rushed. But here she has uh, a list of uh, words. I'm calm, I'm collected, I'm centered, I'm organized. So you mm -hmm. use those words to help you make new thought patterns. So, you know, I have plenty of time. I'm always calm. I'm always chillaxed. So that really helps you change. Okay, mm. so that's the good thing about this. She's got like 300 emotions just listed out here. I don't know. You can see that. Yep. Um, and in the back, there's another list of health problems. So um, if you are familiar with uh, the Bible and stuff, this has been, um, you know, an art that people have used forever. And some of us haven't honoured that, that's all. So, you know, in the Bible it says stiff-necked, okay, hardened heart, um, you know, uh, knees, you know, what is that? Um, stiff knees or whatever it is in the Bible. Um, but that's it. It's literal. It's that You don't have to look beyond the mark and then read terribly into it. It's really literal. If your body holds onto a certain emotion long enough, your physical body will show it. Because, you know, you have eyes to see. You will see, um, you know, why am I caring more than I need to? My shoulders always hurt. And then you realize, hey, let me remove some of that burden and say, you guys take care of this. You guys do your stuff. And, and then your shoulders will feel better because you're not carrying everybody's uh, responsibility. Mm. Or knees. knees my my um, knees will hurt for one day. Um, <laughs> a couple of years ago when my husband got a job in the country, in the out back in Australia, <laughs> where Kelly left to. <laughs> um, and I did not want to go because I was in Sydney and my kids were singing in the Sydney Opera House. I had all the reasons in the world to stay. So I was sent him off and I was hoping maybe he didn't like it, he'll come back. Um, and, you know, we weren't together and uh, our family wasn't together, but I felt like we should go, but no, I won't go. Um, this makes so much more sense. And my knee hurt one day and I muscle tested. I thought, what emotion is that? Oh, it's stubborn. And I thought, well, stubborn about what? And I thought, stubborn about this, this, this. Oh, stubborn about moving. Oh, okay, that's, that is the emotion. Okay, so I said, which oils do I put on my knees? Because that's really painful. Um, and then winter green came up. So I thought, okay, winter green, that's good. It's a good oil for pains. But winter green, when I look it up, is the oil of surrender. Hmm. <laughs> Wow. So what was that message to Jade? Mm-hmm. Yep, surrender. 
The rent a girlfriend. <laughs> Go. Right. You are inspired to do this. Go. So I thought, okay, we'll get our stuff together and work it out. And then okay. we left. We went down there and mm-hmm. holy moly, we found people that, um, you know, are our best friends now, you know, people that I wow. you know, ch- will cherish forever and mm-hmm. um, people that we've been able to help. And, you know, this doTERRA our community is still growing there. Right, Kelly? <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs> and it's just been powerful. And I, I was just the instrument to deliver the message. Um, but I was grateful for that pain in my knees because it helped me understand that I wasn't bending. I wasn't being um, flexible. Okay. I was stubborn, you see. And then I learned. But guess what? That knee problem went away like that. It's all gone. Right, just that one moment in um, like that day, that was it. So you can look up your health concerns and just find out what is it that um, my body's asking for uh, to change. So headaches, I look up headaches. Um, you know, knee problems, look at knees. So that's that's the the way we do the emotional healing. Yep. So any questions, comments? I know it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we need a part two. <laughs> part two, exactly. Yeah, that's how we're doing that course. <laughs> but if you hadn't have gone there, you wouldn't have found so many people that actually needed so much healing. Yeah. Like it's a real blessing when you came. Yep, thank you. So I'm mm-hmm. really grateful. <laughs> yep, so we're done for today. Wow. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So we'll stop the recording now. Yep. And next week, uh, we will. Uh, it's line and maintaining peace. Our topic Ooh. for next week. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, we'll get all these posted, and you can share them with your friends and send them the links and everything. So we'll go okay. ahead and stop the recording now. Thank you for coming, everybody.